Hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, The Fanatical View. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, live in studio here on this sweltering July 11th. Yes, that's right, the heat wave has continued. I don't know if anybody else saw this. I saw a headline the other day said another heat wave on the way. I was like, what are you guys telling me this for? We're in the middle of a heat wave. It has never ended. Why would you even say such a thing? Anyways, uh, we are here ready to talk some sports. Uh, it's 6 to 6.30, our usual time slot. I'm uh, joined by my right-hand man, Mr. Bob Broad Jr., who who knows what he's doing behind the camera technical right technical now here. as he's uh, tangled in wires, just a complete oh. dishevelment of a mess over yeah. there. Hey, what's How you doing on? there, Bob? I'm doing good. Good, well, good to see you again. Nice to be here. Of course, Bob's show Spotlight On airs on uh, Tuesday nights at 9. I believe it re-airs Wednesdays at 12. That's right. Noon, high noon, and uh, Mike Tui is in the control room, our director. His show, Expose Cinema, on Friday nights at uh, prime time, 9 o'clock. And then he re airs, I believe, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock re air time. So you can check those guys out. And of course, Stanbury Westerners, uh, which we are a part of. Bob does a lot of work for those guys. That show's on right after us. I see Bob Cardell just delivered me some water. Her show yes. uh, is on at 7.30. It looks like she'll be back. She's been off lately, so nice to see her in the studio. And uh, we'll be, uh, those are all the shows to check out. We're gonna talk about baseball today. Um, I don't know if Bob is not untangled from the wires. Maybe he wants to go to the Westerners first. Yeah, you or can do that. maybe he just wants to me to keep going. If keep he's, going uh, until he, I don't get know. out of this mess here. What a disaster. All right, we'll talk about baseball. And it was a big day in major leagues this afternoon as uh, the captain, Derek Jeter, graced the field for the first time this season for the New York Yankees as he returned uh, as the Yankees were trying to split a four-game series with the Kansas City Royals. And before Jeter even came up, his uh, right-hand man there, Andy Pettit, spotted the Royals a three spot in the top of the inning. That wasn't yeah, I pretty. Saw, I saw that kind of... Uh... <laughs> but Jeter came up in his usual two-hole, beat out an infield hit, and, and uh, he was off and running. Uh, uh, hit a little hit and run with Robbie Cano, got him to third base, yep. and then a little blue uh, single, and he scored a run in his first inning of play. And things looked good later in the day when he uh, also had an RBI, went one for four. Yankees rallied big, 8-4, I believe, was the final score after falling behind 4-1. Pettit did not look good in those early couple innings. And then uh, within about an hour or so after the game, here comes the uh, news that Jeter uh, will be sent for an MRI. So he came back and now he's They rushed him back. Uh, no way, no when, no how did I believe we would be seeing Derek Jeter before the All-Star break. He had about two, three uh, rehab appearances down there in AAA Scranton Wilkes Bar. And uh, they said, we need you and we need you now. Panic, push the big old panic button, as it were. And I uh, said, Derek, come bail us out. We've been waiting for you all year. We can't wait any longer. And he's, uh, Got a possible quad injury. Oh, Who knows what will happen with that? These injuries, that's the biggest problem. As you come back from them, uh, your body reacts in ways as it compensates for the injury that was taking effect. And so uh, as he hustled down the line, uh, he came up a little lame. And uh, he told reporters after the game he was going to go for an MRI. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Uh, we'll have to find out how bad it is, but not a good start. Besides the fact that they rallied for a victory, uh, in his first game back, the news afterwards has to present a little somber mood over those giddy Yankee fans who said, the captain's back, all's right in the world, we're ready to make our second half run, uh, watch out Red Sox, here we come, all that good stuff. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. 39-year-old, uh, about to turn 40, right? And uh, the other troops that are supposed to be coming back, Granderson, i surprised he's still out, I thought he'd right. be back well before Jeter, but he's still out. No timetable necessarily on his return. We know the whole uh, Alex Rodriguez, A-Royd, yeah. A-Rod fiasco, what's going on with that and his deal. Um, Can you hear me you know, he doesn't, he, he's right. working out. He's uh, not, you know, necessarily making much progress with his uh, AAA. I mean, he's been down and doing uh, rehab assignments long before Jeter. Yeah. Why isn't he back? Maybe because it has to do with this whole drug suspension looming over his head, the investigation by uh, major leagues, 
and all that stuff? Will he be suspended? Will he be able to play? Will he be suspended and then appeal and be able to play? That's what most people think, Bob. Yeah. That well, the suspension will come down 100 games, but because it's a non-failed drug test and it's just going to be this, you know, he said, she said, the guy right. down at the Biogenis lab in Florida saying that we got the goods on this guy. He was here. Um, you know, the Major League Baseball, the, the Players Association is going to be able to fight that and he will be able to put in an appeal and that will mean that the, uh, you know, that the suspension won't take a place until that appeal is heard. Right. So this is going to drag out longer. In the meantime, the Yankees aren't willing to actually activate him in three days like they did Jeter after right. three days of rehab. Uh, so the Yankees uh, are 50 and 42 right now, five and a half games uh, behind the Red Sox who are in action also right now are concluding a uh, swing through Seattle. They were down 5-2 in the early innings today. Uh, not sure if they have rallied uh, what the score is there, uh, but the Red Sox are looking to uh, maintain their first place lead. Tampa is the team in the AL East right now mm -hmm. that is uh, one eight straight, yep. um, and they have pulled to within three games of the lead of the Red Sox. Uh, Yankees are pulled within even of the Orioles. Uh, the Orioles have been a very streaky bunch, Bob. They're four and six in their last 10 games. Right. They're not doing great right now as they have fallen basically into fourth place, tied for third with the uh, Yankees. They were the third place team for a while. They looked like the team that was gonna be catching up to the red hot Red Sox. Um, but no, they have now slipped back and the Yankees caught them. Last week I had to laugh and it'll, it'll be the same thing this weekend, Bob, because guess who they're playing again this weekend? Uh, the Twinkies. The Twinkies, yeah. Minnesota. Uh, you know, I had to laugh last week when uh, everybody started saying, oh, here come the Yankees. They're rolling. They won six straight. They swept the Twinkies four in a row. The Twinkies should forfeit every game they play against the Yankees. It doesn't matter who's right. playing for the Yankees. Jeter, A-Rod, Teixeira, those guys, the, it wouldn't matter. They could bring, bring up, up their AAA team, team and the Twinkies would yeah. roll over for All them. Right. Bob, we see this every year. So the Yankees went out there and won four straight against them, tacked down a couple extra ones against Baltimore before losing the season for a series finale. And everybody's like, oh, the Yankees are surging. The Yankees are surging. The Twinkies were squished and all the cream came out. That's what happened. That's what happens every time they play the Twinkies. I mean, if they put the Yankee roster in Twinkie uniforms right. and the Twinkie uniforms yeah. on the Yankee players, yeah. it, it would be the same results. results. Yeah. So that means nothing. And right. they get, how do they end up playing seven games against them in a two week period? They get to close their, uh, before the All-Star game, with three at home against, uh, you know, a four-game series against Kansas City, right. three at home against the Twinkies after yeah. they just played them four in Minnesota. Meanwhile, the Red Sox are on a 10-game road trip through the AL West. They get the Angels in Seattle, and they finish it off in Oakland. That's how they get to go into the break. So we see what the schedule makers are up to again, trying to give those Yankees a nice soft landing into the All-Star break. And uh, speaking of the All-Star break, Bob, I went to City Field last time for the first time. Oh, yeah. And City Field, of course, is the home of the All-Star game this year. I got yes. a nice souvenir cup, All-Star game. Uh, City Field was pretty nice. Your Mets actually won, and uh, they've been doing quite a bit about yes. that, Bob. Why don't you let us know how you're feeling about your Mets right hey, now? They're doing great. That's all you got to say about it? <laughs> I was hoping to take a sip out of my cup, and that's all you give me? <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we're You can't hitting. rhapsodize about your Mets for a second? Yeah, well, they're hitting, and they're doing great, you know, we're pitching starting to come around. Yeah, they're actually playing very well. They swept the uh, defending World Series champion San Francisco Giants out right. in the Bay Area three straight. They took, which was the first time they had swept San Fran in San Francisco since uh, 1994, I believe it was. Um, the record's still 40 and 48, right. which I think when they swept the Yankees in a, that uh, unbelievable four-game series right. between the two stadiums, they were seven games uh, below 500 at that point, and everybody thought they were on a run. Amazingly, they did so much damage to themselves after that series that even with as well as they've played in the last three weeks, they still find themselves eight games below. Oh, yeah. But you have to be excited about the way the Mets are playing right now. They sent Ike Davis down. 
um, and he has come back. Yeah. Um, uh, satin, Satan, like satin. made a deal with the devil, satin. I guess. Oh, Satin. It's, it's not satin. Satan. Are not we sure about that? Yes. He came it's up satin. for like Davis. He played well, gave him a spark. Davis, of course, is back now. He's done a little better since returning. Um, and, of course, Zach Wheeler is uh, fully entrenched in the rotation now. He uh, pitched great out in San Francisco, who the team that traded uh, traded away yeah. uh, Wheeler for Beltron uh, a couple years ago. So he proved uh, to them they made a mistake maybe there by letting him go. Uh, so he um, settled into a real nice game yesterday. Of course, Harvey. And is Harvey going to be starting the All-Star game? Is that official or are people just I, assuming I'm that is going sure to happen? I don't know if that is officially stated yet. I've heard a lot of uh, Met fan, Met people on the radio saying he will be starting, but I don't think that's official yet. It Good chance depends. that he I mean, will I mean, it's, start that game. It's in City Field. That would be so. the right thing to do. Right. Of course, now there's a little, uh, even when the Mets have positive vibes, everything going good, uh, there's always this little, little taste of negativity yeah. because now they're sitting him out of his regular start. You know, they're playing well. Um, you know, if they finish off these last four or five games before the All-Star break, they could pull within five games, four yeah. games of 500 Instead, they're going to sit him down in the series against Pittsburgh this weekend. Pittsburgh, of course, uh, one of the top teams yeah, in the league hot, right now. Hot. Yeah, um, they are struggling. Actually, four and six in the last ten. They were in first place. They were the first team to 50 wins. Amazing. The yeah. Buckos were the first team to 50. Um, they had the best record in baseball for a few days. The Red Sox currently hold that record at 56 and 37 with the best record. And the Cards have now moved St. Louis yeah. a game and a half ahead of Pittsburgh as we come into Not this uh, series. But, um, you know, it's a big kind of uh, the fans are a little bit disgruntled. I mean, personally, I I'm think that the Mets could pitch him on Saturday. And the All-Star game is on Tuesday, uh, and they could treat that as a bullpen session. I mean, he would be doing right? a side session anyways on Tuesday, so he's only going to pitch an inning in the All-Star game anyways. Mm -hmm. I think you could pitch him Saturday and let him pitch an inning in the All-Star game, and that would not it be a big stationary. deal. But they are going to sit him down, it's skip like his start. Right They're claiming some blister perhaps, uh, giving them an excuse. Well, but the fans are a little bit disappointed about that. Uh, so, you know, they're not happy with that situation. The fans are. We'll see if that affects this uh, little run through, uh, you know, these last three weeks where they've been winning a lot of games, if this affects them in any negative way and if it affects them coming out of the break. You know, we don't think necessarily that they're going to make a run for uh, getting themselves re-engaged in the wild card race. Right. But, you know, you have to start somewhere, and they've started about three weeks ago winning games. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. And they're putting this all-star game, this all-star appearance uh, ahead of the team, basically. And that's uh, ruffled some feathers. So even when it's good for the Mets, it's bad for the Mets. Well, I mean, look at the last time the All-Star game was in, in Shea. It was 1964. 1964. So, uh, so you know, yeah, I mean, uh, that's a long time. They never yeah. had one uh, there since, since then, then, huh? No. So uh, City Field will get to show off. You know, and I got to say, I mean, it was uh, good the Mets won. Um, it's hard to really analyze whether or not I like the stadium or not because there's just so many empty seats. Mm. I mean, there was nobody there, not much life. Of course, they rallied in the seventh inning in a 1-1 game. One run was in, the bases were loaded, the place was starting to get jacked up, and the uh, umpires come out and call a rain delay right. when there was barely a drizzle coming down. I was very disappointed in the handling of that mist. It was like they called a rain delay because it was too humid out and there was too much moisture in the air. It was barely raining. And they went to a rain delay with the bases loaded, nobody out. Right. Uh, of course, we stayed through the whole thing. An hour and a half rain delay, watched the end of the game. Mets did look good as they finished it up. Um, but it was a pretty ridiculous rain delay. But it's hard to kind of get a gauge on you know, what kind of life this building has. Right. It's certainly a nice looking building. It's set up nice. Um, you know. Eh, there's some things about it that I didn't particularly care for, but uh, all, overall, it's a great place. So, you know, we'll see. It'll be on full display on uh, next Tuesday during the All-Star break, home run derby, right. uh, then the All-Star game itself. David Wright will be in the All-Star game. And that's another thing, Bob. How about this? What do you think about this? Okay. I mean, we go to the game, right? Right. And I'm looking. Where are the things that you, like, actually punch the hole in? 
you know, they used to just hand those out right. during the game. Yeah. You would punch the ticket. You'd vote for the All Stars. That's how it was done. Now you gotta like go find these things. They're not even available to the people sitting in the seats, um, and everything is done online. You can yeah. go online and vote countless amount of times for people. Right. There's all this online stuff where they're making promotions. Whatever happened to you? Go to the game. You get a little palette. And then you, you take your the, pencil. And you, pop you punch the, the hole. Out, and you you make your the, votes. Yeah. It was much fairer way to vote for the uh, All-Star game then than what's going on now. I do not care for this charade that is the All-Star voting. Uh, it's really quite laughable the way they do it now. Uh, but we'll see what's happening. All right, so in your NL East, Bob, let's check a little standings as we're okay. talking mostly baseball today. Um, the Braves remain first place in your NL East, 52-39. and 39. You know, they've got a solid record. It's not that great when you consider they were, what, 10 and 1 right. to start the season. So overall, they're not spectacular, but they're maintaining their pace, keeping a five game lead on those right. Washington Nationals. Everybody's preseason pick to go to the World Series. The Nationals got Bryce Harper back recently. He hit a home run, I believe, in his first at bat, right? Yeah. And uh, they've got a couple other players back. They are now three games over 500, which is the highest they've been over 500 in a long time. Right. I don't know if they ever got three games over, even at the beginning of the year. Uh, I think they were started three and zero. Actually, that was probably it. And uh, so they are three games over, six and four in their last ten, playing a little bit better, but still not great. Uh, the Phillies, two games below 500. Right. remain you know in striking distance at seven and a half games out um the question with the phillies really is are they going to be buyers or sellers come trade time uh jonathan papelbon a guy a lot of people talking about uh there is always a need the red sox hey the red sox got a lot of bullpen issues uh bailey is now not even the closer uh, you know, Hanrahan we know is out for the year. They lost another guy, uh, Miller, the other day, who's been a workhorse for them in the bullpen. They have big uh, bullpen issues. They're going to have to get somebody, whether or not is Jonathan Papelbon making his uh, glorious return to Boston. Uh, I do not know if that will take place. Right. Um, no, I think the fans would welcome him back in open arms, even though he's made some idiotic comments since leaving, but he was kind of an idiot and right. part of that whole idiot clan and said a lot of silly things when he was in Boston, so fans just kind of see him as being that way. Um, so if they do go out and get him, they're going to have to look and get somebody and bolster this bullpen because their bullpen really is their biggest letdown right now as they're piecing it together, just trying to figure out a way to go. And remember this, Bob, 56 and 37, best throw record in the AL. Right. They've done this with Clay Buckholz basically being out since the beginning of May, and he's 9 and 0, their yeah. number one starter, and also uh, you know, John Lester not pitching good at all. Lester uh, got shelled again the other day in Seattle as they opened that series, um, and that wasn't good. He had pitched two pretty good games in a row before that, which had Red Sox fans thinking, all right, maybe he's settled down after a great start to the season. Right. Then he went through a pretty bad stretch, and uh, Red Sox fans were saying this is the real John Lester that we've known in the last couple of years where he just has not been solid, right. not been consistent, can't get it done. Um, so there's some question marks there with Lester. Um, you know, Lackey, surprising, has pitched very well. Dempster overall has been pretty good. Uh, he gave up five runs early in this game today that they're playing right now, uh, but three were unearned. Uh, so he overall has pitched pretty well. Um, so we'll see what's going on. Felix Dubron pitching very well. But the Red Sox doing this without a you know solid yeah. bullpen as they try to figure that out. And with Buckholz being out. Uh, offense has been very good. David Ortiz now owns all designated hitter records, if that matters to you, as he uh, set the uh, all-time hits record past Terrell Baines last night. He had already owned just about all of them already. Runs scored, RBIs, home runs, all that good stuff. So he is the man as it comes to designated hitters in the history of the game. And he did it in Seattle where Edgar Martinez was on that list of great designated hitters. So that was kind of neat that he got it done there. Uh, so they remain first place to race 53 and 40. Uh, they are second place, three back. We mentioned the Yankees winning today, five and a half back. Uh, we'll see what happens with them. Um, AL Central, Bob, Tigers back in first place. Uh, they did a little number on the Indians this past weekend. The Indians had moved into a first place tie with them uh, as Terry Francona, Tito's gang there. 
uh, look to be writing their ship after a little long losing streak they had. But again, they st struggled this week. So they are now three behind the Tigers, 48 and 44. Kansas City hanging around a little bit. I think Kansas City is still a team that can make a little noise, at least keep pressure on Cleveland yeah. and Detroit as the season goes on and play some more competitive baseball. We saw them split two games, uh, a four-game series, two and two with the Yankees uh, this week uh, as they just finished that series up. They are 43 and 46, so three below 500, but not too far off. Six and a half back, AL West, uh, Oakland, remains in first place, but only by a half a game. Red Sox head to Oakland uh, tomorrow for a series with them. Uh, they're seven and three in their last 10, so they continue to play well. 54 and 38, the Rangers a half a game behind them. Texas, the team that just finds ways to win games. They lost players, they keep uh, coming up with new guys, and they're just a solid bunch, uh, and they are playing very well. And how about this, are you uh, buying Anaheim is getting back in the mix, Bob? They have played pretty well. They've pulled to within two games of 500. Nine out of first place there. Uh, but still, if they get themselves to 500 by the All-Star break, they are in striking distance of a wild card. So they've done a pretty good job over the last three weeks, at least playing competitive, getting back in the mix. Uh, so we'll see what happens with them. Um, in the NL Central, we touched on that a little bit already. Pittsburgh was in first place. They have now struggled a little in the last week and a half or so, one and a half games behind St. Louis who moved back in front and the big red machine still sitting there, five games out, 51 and 40. How about in that West, Bob? If you're not buying the Angels, right. are you buying the Dodgers? Yes. You are buying the Dodgers as they are back to 500, Donnie Baseball, and really, Yusil Puig, this kid, has come up and he shocked the baseball world. There's a clamor for him to play in the All-Star game, even yep. though he's only played about 30 games yep. total. But every game he's been in, he's had game-winning hits, game-winning defensive plays, home runs of plenty. This kid is just lighting up the league, uh, really putting on a show. I have a funny feeling he will find his way into that All-Star game somehow. Yes, I think he will. But better yet for the Dodgers and their fans, it's like Fernando Mania. Remember Fernando Mania, Bob? Yes, I do. It's like Puig Mania as this kid yes. is taking the team by storm, and they're one and a half games out of first yes. place. And I got a close up, up close and personal look at, at the first place team, Arizona, and let me tell you, they're no great shakes, Bob. No. They do not strike any fear with that roster they got. I don't know how they're doing it. 47 and 44, they're in first place. Dodgers right behind them, and the defending champs are in last place yeah. in the NL West. The Giants 40 and 50 overall. They've lost 14 out of the last 16 games. Not good. No. All right, Bob, before Let's, we get to your Westerners, let yeah. me mention tennis real quick because okay. Wimbledon was exciting. It was the first time a uh, British born man, Great Britain, had a champion. 77 years, Andy Murray, the Scotsman. And I will tap into my uh, Scottish, English, Irish heritage. Uh. I'm Italian on one side, <laughs> Scottish, English, Irish on the other. And I was fully enthralled as Andy Murray, quite an accomplishment, knocks, out, knocks off the number one uh, player in the world, uh, Novak Djokovic, and really a thrilling, it was a three game, uh, he took them four in four sets, but it was uh, stunning really. That final game to get him was amazing, really. And uh, Murray, hats off to him. It was, it was an epic, epic run for him. And he brings Great Britain the first championship uh, in 77 years. Uh, really quite a thrill. And uh, it was the, the semifinal match between Djokovic and Del Potro was really right. the match of the tournament. Del Potro threw everything he had in an epic five setter against uh, Djokovic. Just could not quite get past him. Really just an amazing, amazing match. Um, and then Murray comes through in the final. Uh, and on the women's side, it was Lissicki falling to Bartoli uh, as that, uh, you know, was a surprise with Serena going down. Lissicki upset her uh, in the round of 16. And of course, the big upsets early in the, in the tournament. Sharapova went down early. You know, on the men's side, it was Federer and Nadal going down early. So Wimbledon was actually very exciting this year. As it typically is, it was a great right. event. I enjoyed it. Uh, Danbury Westerners, Bob, 
They won a couple games here in yes. a row, trying to get themselves back in the mix. Fifth place overall in their division out of six teams, 10 and 13. Vermont is first place, 15 and seven. Uh, you know, at 10 and 13, they're not that far off from being no. playoff bound, no, however, because the top four place. teams, right, make it? Yeah. So Vermont, 15 and seven, Saratoga, 11 and nine, Holyoke, 11 and 12, North Adams right in front of Danbury, 10 and 12, Keene right behind them at nine and 12. So they had that six game, was it six or seven that they lost? Yeah. Six game losing streak. Uh, they have righted that ship. They lost seven out of eight at one point. So they really went through a tough time. They were six and six, yeah. sitting at 500, off to a pretty decent start. Uh, and then all of a sudden things just went haywire as they lost that extra inning game. Remember the coach was very upset yes. about that. Um, and they, that was errors plagued them in that yeah. game. Went extra innings, they blew out the bullpen and they had no days off and he was concerned that uh, they really taxed their uh, pitching staff in that game and it was not gonna be helpful to them over that weekend. And that pretty much sent them reeling on that six, out of, uh, six game losing streak, seven out of eight. But maybe, maybe uh, they got things turned around a little bit. They've won a few games in a row, including a win right. in an exhibition game, yep. but against the international team, Team Canada came to town. Was, Rogers uh, Park Sunday, how was that? That was a pretty was good great, event, right? Great crowd, good deal. How have the crowds nice. been? The crowd's been bearing the heat, yes. bearing the rain delays, yep. bearing all that? Yep. Um, so the Danbury Westerners are trying to uh, get their season on track. Uh, Westerners round ups after us tonight. Um, but yeah, come on we'll, down to yeah, the... Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll be down there doing some interviews. We'll be Hopefully, down there uh, next Thursday. They have a home game. They've got some sure some home games before then. But we'll be there on Thursday of next week as the show will be off next week. But we're not going to just uh, rest on our laurels. We'll go and do something instead of being here. We'll be down at the park. Hopefully it'll be a nice day. Hopefully some of this humidity will break yeah. and uh, no rain. We'll get some interviews. So come on down to Rogers Park. Uh, are they home this weekend at all? No, they're away this weekend. They've been home quite a bit the yeah. last two weeks, so they're away this weekend. They'll be back home next week. I know for sure they're home on Thursday. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what's going on. Hopefully by then, yeah. the coaches will be in a little better mood yeah. to talk to us if they have been grumpy lately. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Maybe by then they'll be moving up that uh, standings in the NHC Bill, the Western Division. Remember, they are the defending Western Division champs. Yes, they are. So don't sleep on them. They had a big second half last year. So they'll get it back together. Coaches know what they're doing there. All right, that's it for the show. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next time, and uh, maybe we'll see you down at the park next week. Yeah, come on down. Take care.